Welcome back to round two of the Earth Day celebration up here at Bethel University in Minnesota. I'm Richie Ortiz hanging out with the man himself, Mr. Kale Leviska. How's it going, man? Yeah, it's going great. It's a pleasure to be here watching this, this beautiful footage. Definitely, man. Thanks for joining us. It's my pleasure. So as you can see, we've got a star-studded card here. A lot of the, a lot of the greatest players up here in Minnesota. And uh, starting here on hole one, we've got a par three. 321 feet. There are a uh, couple strategies on this hole. Uh, I'll let you take away the strategy on this one. This one, this main strategy is just to stay out of those huge cedars that you see. It's just a wall if you get in there. It's very difficult to get up and down, so all these guys are just trying to peer it up this gap. Oh, definitely. And that gap is, that gap is a lot skinnier than it looks. You know, once you step up to that tee pad, it's just like, wow, I have to hit that thing. Looks like Noah might have kicked through. Here we got Pat Christie, the northern Minnesota legend. Ooh, it looks like he hit pretty early. That could be trouble. I've actually never seen anybody until uh, until this Earth Day celebration. I've never seen anybody take that high hyzer route. Yeah, uh, some of the bigger arms will definitely do it. I think... Uh, yeah, you just don't want to hit over there on the right side, so I always try to just go up the middle on this one. Here we got Jerry keeping it low and straight, and it's a safe play. Probably lay up for his three from there. Alex is, yep, Alex is thinking of something big here. Going with his patent pending huge spike hyzer. If anyone can uh, throw the big hyzer on this one, it's Alex. don't know what happened there. <laughs> oh, he shook his head. He doesn't, he doesn't love it. Oh, this is going to be tough for Pat to get up and down from here. I know yeah. where he's at. Oh, man. He almost had it wide enough. Yeah, you can see the basket's kind of on a down slope here, too. So it, it really, if you go past the basket, the, the disc has a tendency to just keep going and leave you with a long uphill comeback. Mm -hmm. So if, if you're really not feeling your, your birdie putt, you might just want to lay this up and take your three. No yep. shame in a three on this one. Yeah. As Noah just did there. Yeah. We just saw Alex before Noah just pitch out of that tree there. Ended up in a bad spot, looks like. Uh, Patrick playing smart. Alex for the par. Easy putt. Probably just going to watch these guys clean up now. Jared from coming from southern Minnesota this guy I remember he played really well at this event last year he, he must like this course I had the pleasure of playing with Pat the first round which I'm sure you guys have seen was not my finest but but Pat really stepped it up on the on our card this morning and earned his way into lead card I'm proud of him but he's taking the lone bogey on hole one Pretty close there on the scores. We've got Noah at 11, then Jared trailing and Patrick. It's a pretty close game so far. Coming into hole two, we got a par three at 246 feet. This hole is really tricky. Um, what you want to do is pretty much uh, throw an Anheuser shot pretty wide and hope that it can just get the slightest bit of fade on the way back down so it doesn't go too far down that hill. And Ooh, Noah. Gas that thing. <laughs> yeah, I think that thing faded a little bit earlier than he hoped. It's a tricky hole to park. I, I like to throw a putter on this one, something that'll land flat. Because if you get any weird action with the, with the angles on the, when you land by the green, you can get some weird rollaways. But it's definitely a hard, hard hole to park. When Alex says his first name, you know he loves it. <laughs> <laughs> Refers to himself in the third person. Patrick looking good. Yeah, he turned oh, it over a little, yeah. a little fast. Um, yeah, honestly, I think the best play is to just rip it up into the trees and kind of play, play through it. It's the, it's the best way to park it. And Pat still, he's got a great long putt. He's still got a chance. Yeah, correct me if I'm wrong, but I mean, that is a good route through the trees, and it is the best route. But is there actually a gap there? Because oh, oh wow, oh my gosh. That is a death putt. It definitely falls off behind the basket here. Beautiful too right there, Alex. Yeah. Super good. 
But yeah, is there actually a gap like that you're that you should be aiming for? Or are you just hoping that you don't hit any of those trees? Yeah, there is an initial gap, but then once you hit that initial gap, there's like you know, two trees that you kind of gotta just pray to get by. So. Yeah. But even if, if you hit the initial gap, you at least get yourself a 40 footer. But then again, you got the the death putt going downhill. We got Jared for birdie. Yeah. Wow. Oh jeez, no chains. Good for you, buddy. That's a tough putt to go for. Definitely is scary behind the basket there. Just enough. Got Noah cleaning up his par here. Yeah, hopefully the viewer can see just how beautiful this campus is that we're, we're playing at here at Bethel University. We're very lucky to play here. Jim Bealby and Josh Girth built this course and have put in so much work and it's just a joy to be out here. A couple good birds by Jared and Alex there. Looking like I've uh, got a two-way tie for first place coming in. Noah and Jared. Yeah, we got a lot of holes to play. This is going to be a good battle. Oh, definitely. Hole three, we've got a par four, 582 feet. This one's tricky. You want to get a really, really good drive off of this one. Uh, otherwise, you're not going to be able to see that gap that'll lead to the basket. Yeah, really the, you know, a big mistake you can make is just hyzering off too early because then you really are just pinching yourself with no angle. Right. Even if you throw it short and make sure you finish right, you can still have a chance at it. And this looks perfect. That's pretty unbelievable. <laughs> I've yeah, played get, this course many times. I don't think I've ever gotten there. You got to push this far enough. Yep, where Alex is throwing there, you know, he's not happy with it, but that's totally fine. As long as you're right, you can still get the angle to, to get, get your birdie three on this tough par four. Mm -hmm. Oh, geez, that's looking good. That looks very good. Oh my. That looks perfect. Absolute crush by Noah there. Pretty much perfect look for the upshot. And that sh should be far enough. Oh. Might have been a fortunate kick there, actually. Yeah, he hit the tree on the corner, but he'll still, he'll still have a look. Yeah. So this basket. This basket where it rests is on a side hill and it's just, you really want to land the disc up above the basket and let it kind of funnel down to it. If you land at the basket, you're liable to, to kind of scoot downhill 15, 20 feet and sometimes catch a weird roll. So I always try to play it up above the basket on this and let it kind of funnel down. Yep. And right there around the basket is some pretty slippery dirt and usually leaves. So as you can see here, so yeah, you're totally right. End up at the basket, you're probably going down the hill a good bit. Noah with the crush, just got a little putter upshot, but still no upshot is easy on this hole. Pretty yeah, solid. Gives, gives it a little run. Yeah, he went up, trickled a little deep, but that was a nice upshot. Alex laying up, gonna take a par. But you can see what I mean, how, it, how the disc just has a tendency to scoot downhill on this. Wow, that was confident. It's a great birdie. Yep, really good connection there by Noah. Little tap for the basket. Got Patrick. Birdie this in the previous round, hoping to do it again. Oh no. Yeah, he's looks like he's a little bit off with that laser spin putt. He definitely didn't miss too many of those this morning, so I'm sure he'll turn it around here. Yeah, he's got a really interesting putt. It's kind of like a, kind of like an Anheuser angle, and he kind of aims a little bit left of the basket, hoping it comes back in, and it usually does. He does. He's got ultimate confidence with that. He, uh, you know, minimizes his, his body movement and kind of just keeps his head still and just kind of rifles it with his arm. Yeah, I guess for I guess for some people, if you uh, if you cut out all the extra movement and just focus on one thing, then probably a more consistent strategy. Not happy with that, but if you move a, on from it, it's not a bogue. Yep, it's a tough hole. Noah and Jared kind of breaking away from the pack there. 
Not so much, but uh, kind of give them a little bit of comfortability. Moving on to hole four, 330 feet. This one is a uh, this one is a technical shot. Um, it is it is a good rip because you're probably going to want to use a fairway driver or a mid range. Um, but the issue with it is you have to turn over just a little bit. It looks a little bit more of a turnover than it actually is, but it's just the slightest bit of turnover. And if you go too much, you're too right. And if you fade out, you're too left. Wow. I thought that might be too straight, but that was absolutely perfect. Oh my gosh. My tendency on this one is to just throw a little bit too straight. Ooh, as yeah, Noah gets so a tough kick. So it was so close to being so good, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a there's a low ceiling on this, and it's really easy to go too deep. It's it's hard to get the correct turn and then keep it pushing straight. Either the disc either wants to turn too much or go or straight. That's uh, that's Alex's oh. FD, and it uh, it usually goes pretty straight, just the slightest bit of fade. So that was that was a really good choice of disc by him, but I think it just grip locked it a little bit. It looks like Noah and Alex both kicked left, which you can't really tell there, but it's it's pretty good drop downhill. Let's see if Pack can make the adjustment. That looks a little too straight too, I think. Yeah, it's gonna be a tough pitch out. Yeah, this is certainly a par three, and it's very tuable. But it, it, if you're not very precise with your drive, you can get in trouble really fast, and the bogeys can can happen pretty easily on this hole, actually. Oh, nice shot. Well, as you can see oh, right there. No. Oh gosh, there it goes. The All the way to the fire pit. The fire that pit. is about as bad of a kick, as bad of a roll as you can get. Oh my gosh, I feel bad for him. Yeah, it's a tough spot. I mean, he would he would have been pretty short of the basket, but looks like he's going to end up with the bogey either way. If he can get up and down here. Yep, I bogeyed this in the first round. It's uh, you know, it's a hole you wanted to, but you're just a little bit off. You can you can definitely take a four very easily. Yeah, it's definitely oh, wow. not uncommon four. And that was an unbelievable par save, Noah. Hey, par save. <laughs> nice shout out, man. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> par save productions, baby. <laughs> yeah, super good from Noah there. I'm sure he's happy with that. Oh, Pat made it up there a ways, but yeah, it's a tough, tough birdie putt. No problem there from Alex. Yeah, no, no one Alex's game. I know he probably wanted to come out the gates charging so he can make a run at this lead. That's probably not the start he wanted, but there's still plenty of holes to get some birdies here. Chase these guys down. That's a great two, Jared. Taking the outright lead. It's so close to the basket. It's such a technical hole, it's difficult to get that close. I think Pat's yet to take a birdie too. He's, uh, he's got to pick it up here if he wants to make a run at this. Mm -hmm. Look at that, Jared jumping into the lead by one stroke. And we are moving on here to hole five. This hole five, par four, 522 feet. I'll let you walk us through the strategy on this one, Kale, because I definitely have not figured it out yet. This hole, it's you're throwing from up high, you're throwing downhill, and it's a pretty tight tunnel, actually, low ceiling. Really, all I'm trying to do is throw it about 350 down the gap, just make sure I can get an upshot because if you hit early, you're really pinched because uh, there's a huge tree in the middle that doesn't really let you get up and down unless you kind of get up to it. Ooh, that looks like he yanked that one. Oh no. Yeah, grip lock. That's going to be difficult. Yeah, a lot of people will try to throw rollers here because you can play it you know, up up the hillside on the right. Um, I personally like to try to just, just hammer one straight down the gap and get a putter upshot, but we might see some rollers here. Yep, there we go, Noah. That's a tough roller. Um, oh, that's that's a great angle, though. There yeah, it is. Really good. So he's not really going for, for too much distance on that, trying to park it. He's just putting himself in a great position to have a easy upshot for a birdie three. Mm -hmm. Stepping up to this hole, uh, it's, not, it's not that narrow, but the thing is those branches up top, it kind of creates a, a low ceiling. 
So pretty much straight down the Alex just hammering a forehand. As he does. Yeah, that was well done. He uh, he should have a little, probably a jump putt up shot to get his birdie three. Jared's very far from the hole on this. He's probably just looking to get up and then take his par four. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh my God. <laughs> there you go, Pat. Pretty amazing. Looks like he's gonna get on the board with the birdie. This is a touchy up shot because, as you can see, it drops off behind the basket. If you're uh, coming in a little hot, it's easy to go 30, 40 deep on this. Yeah, that's true. So Noah had his great roller, and he has an easy up shot, as does Alex. Yeah, pretty much the ideal way to play this. Have a really good drive, solid, solid up shot, and put it in. I mean, not many people are looking for a two on this one, like you said. And the four is all right. It's nothing wrong with the four on this one. Yeah, holes three, four, and five are a tough stretch. If you can make it make it through hole five being under par, you're feeling really good about the round because you got a lot of two opportunities coming up. There's certainly some, some difficult holes, but I feel like the scoring is uh, a little bit easier from here on out. Jared loses one with the, with the par there, but... And as you can see there on the on Jared's drive on the map, kind of came back to about where the tee pad was. So that three was, or that four actually was, nonetheless a really good quote unquote three. Coming into hole six, 237. Uh, this one is pretty much just straight up the gap. Um, really, what you're trying to do is hit the hillside there and maybe scoot up. Uh, if you're going to play it a little bit higher, you'd also be safe because you've got some trees in the back to to catch if you go too far. This one's tempting, it's so short, you want to give it an ace run, but it, to go high, you're flirting with the low ceiling. So I pretty much just try to throw this one nice and low and just slide it right up for a birdie. Beautiful shot, Noah. And you can see an unorthodox thumber here. This is Glow H1, he tries to land it flat and let it just skip up, Let's see if you can execute it again. Oh yeah, good tree. And if you notice there, he has he has a bunch of marks on the back of that disc, which are probably all aces with that, so he uses that thing well, for sure. Alex throwing a turnover forehand to perfection. That was well done. Looks like Jared's gonna go forehand, too. Done. Yeah, this is one of the shortest holes in the course, but it's it's definitely not easy. You no, gotta hit it's that, not. You got to hit the gap on the drive, and yeah, if you don't hit the gap, you're looking at a, probably a 70 to 80 foot uh, putt for the two. So hitting the gap is essential here. So that's why you saw, for example, Noah put it in the gap, but it wasn't necessarily going right for the basket. I mean, the two is not that hard if you can actually hit that gap and hit the hillside. So that's kind of the strategy on this one. We got Jared missing his birdie, Noah hitting his, so it looks like Noah's gonna take the lead. Pat with a nice two, and Alex is parked. Yeah, that probably didn't feel too good for Jared there. I'm sure he wanted that too, obviously. Um, And uh, we got to take a second here to appreciate these graphics that we're about to see right here. Look at that. You can see where the disc lands. That's, that's, that's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Really stepping it up, guys. Well done. Coming up on hole seven, this is a par four at 475 feet. This is a tough one right here. You've got the water on the left, and that marsh is also pretty much out of bounds for the most part. Um, most people are going to do a backhand turnover. Uh, if you have the power to get a forehand there, that is ideal. Yeah, it's a tough hole. This one absolutely killed me. I went 5-4 on this in the tournament. Oh, no. Derailed all chances of, of doing anything out here. Um, you really got to get it out wide if you want to turn it over and get it to the basket. It's a great shot by Noah. It looks like he's going to stay out of the cattails. Oh, yeah. He's going to have a long birdie putt, but, yeah, that's a, that's a great shot. Pat's got a heck of an arm. We'll see if he can if he can get this one up there. This is 
It's really hard to get an eagle too on this one. Wow. Yeah, it's a great throw. I I think he might be a little pinched behind that tree because I was up there the first round. And I know it's it's not an easy putt, but it's a great shot. Alex trying that forehand. Yeah, he certainly got the power to get there with the forehand. It looks like he kind of played a little bit safer and is going to be content to take a birdie three. Yeah, if I know Alex, he probably wanted that disc to be a little bit flatter, get a little bit more distance. But yeah, definitely nothing wrong with that shot. And Jared might be fading out too early here. You know, that's in the cattails, but I think he probably is dry. Mm -hmm. Oh. <laughs> I guess Alex did want the eagle. Great attempt there. That was pretty. Just a little high. Ooh, that was dead center too. I'd be bold enough to say that it is a rare occasion that Alex is not trying to go for the eagle, whether it's a whether it's an ace on a par three or an eagle on a par Look four. Look at this crafty shot from Jared. That is that's well done. Wow. Oh jeez. He's he's up to about neck high cattails and threw that forehand roller out up up the hill. Just based it. So it looks like, yeah, this is a tough putt. I was here first round. Let's see what he can do. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> what a magician. <laughs> Absolutely cans it with just the most Anheuser putt I've ever seen. And that's when it thats when it helps to have a spin putt, when you're trapped in under a tree and you got to go through a probably six-inch gap. That was well done, Pat. I've not seen this too, too since the first time I was here. And Noah has never seen it too until now. Yeah, this hole is a really solid three. Um, I would say most players that play this course are probably just going for a three on this one, or at least just at least just hoping to not get a four on. Yeah, I practiced this hole and was able to two it, so I got a little uh, oh, no. a little aggressive and ended up going three over or yeah five four on this hole. Not ideal. Very uncharacteristic of you, my friend. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> But here we go, Pat. Pat with the lone eagle. The rest of these guys birdie, and uh, it's tightening up. Mm -hmm. Love to see that blue color there. So another good job to Pat. We got the the shortest hole on the course coming up here. This one, you really just—it's uh, a tight little gap. You just want to kind of let the—I throw a putter and hyzer straight out of the hand, just kind of drop it low. It's actually pretty easy to sail this one long if you get some air under it. So. Pretty much just want to throw it into the ground and yeah if i remember right it's pretty significantly downhill so you want to really just give it a touch shot if you got a nice little touch forehand oh it looks like oh, no almost geez. aces it if you got a nice little touch forehand it's a it's a fairly easy shot for you oh no but there are a lot of trees but looks like alex kind of sawed that one off oh, a little too narrow we got jared going up the gut this is the shot i kind of play Fading out a little too early, but... Yeah, it looks like he might have ticked something and got a nose up and sailed left. Smart shot there by Alex. Um, he was probably giving that a half bid, but, you know, just making sure that he gets that three regardless. Just off. Man, this is, you know, at, at under 200 feet, this is when you definitely want to get... This is a tough course, and... Uh, the twos don't come too easily out here. You definitely want to have this one. There you go, Pat. Yeah, I was thinking about it, and uh, I can really only think of maybe three, maybe four holes that you think, oh, man, I should get a birdie on this one. Like, I really should get a birdie. Maybe I'm just uh, speaking for myself there, but... No, it's true. I mean, there's no gimme birdie on this course. Um, so some of these shorter technical par threes, you know, you really really looking to take a two on it because there's there's a lot of tough holes out here. Mm -hmm. So it looks like Pat and Noah with the only twos. Noah's got the two stroke lead now. You can see, uh, gosh, I love those graphics. I gotta say it again. <laughs> yeah, thanks on that, man. Uh, it just shows four different ways to play the same hole. It's really cool. So uh, coming up on hole nine, 174 feet, also super short. There are pretty much two routes on this one. The other one who forehand through that route on the left um, and then crash into the hill, maybe get a skip up to the basket. Or if you want to play it a little bit higher, you can take the right side route on the backhand. Yeah, it looks like Pat throwing that H1 a little, a little tight. A 
looks like Noah's a little wide. Yeah, the people watching this at home are probably like, come on, 170 foot hole. But trust me, this is tough because, oh gosh. Three for three. It's tough because you gotta you gotta make sure you land at the, with the correct angle too on that hill. If you come in, I throw a putter on that left side. If you come into Anheuser, it'll cut roll on you. Jared goes high with it, and yeah, it looks like it goes a little deep, but he'll be putting up there for probably 15, 20 feet. Pat a little wide on this one, a little long. He was probably trying to get the height on that, and just went a little too fast. Smart play there by Alex. Ooh, Noah's gonna leave himself a little 30, 35 footer for par. Pat's got a long comebacker. That's a death putt too. Oh jeez. Yeah, he's a little low. He's probably thinking about that, about that hill behind. Yeah, 99% confidence on that one, but. Same with Jared. Oh, Noah looks like he snuck through right side chains. Ouch. Yeah, this hole played uh this hole played pretty tough for the lead card here. Yeah, and at that short distance, I mean just seeing how great these guys play, I mean no twos, it just kinda goes to show how uh how technical and difficult this hole is. But well and there was three bogeys, wasn't there? That's Is that? Or two bogeys, okay, sorry. Oh yeah, Jared's was for that was a birdie putt, okay. Right, exactly. 15 down, 14 down, and 13 down. It's a pretty tight race, and Alex is definitely known to come back from a deficit like that. So yeah, it is. Alex has got some firepower. I'm sure he's uh, looking to char make a charge here. Definitely. Well, definitely thanks for joining me, Kale, and uh, I'd like to send a really, really appreciative shout-out to UDISC. They're great guys over there, and we really appreciate their friendship and their desire to grow our sport. And of course, a huge thanks to our viewers and subscribers for the ongoing support. If you haven't subscribed, please take a second to do so, so we can continue to do what we love. Until next time, and thanks, Gil, for joining us. See you on the back nine.